Hello and welcome to this second presentation related to slider crank mechanisms involving graphical solutions. In the first presentation we introduced the topic area using a detailed worked example to illustrate how to construct both velocity and acceleration vector diagrams to solve slider crank problems for a particular instant in time, in other words using a snapshot of their motion. In this presentation we're going to consider some questions. The first presentation ended with a question for you to solve that was based on the example. In this presentation we review that question and other questions for solving this type of mechanism using graphical solutions. It is strongly recommended that you have seen the previous introductory presentation and specifically the example one that contains underpinning knowledge to help you solve the questions within this presentation. The presentation contains three questions outlined here. Question one, horizontal slider crank mechanism. Question two, a vertical slider crank mechanism, like the piston in a car engine. And question three, a slider crank mechanism where the crank is actually accelerating, so slightly different consideration than the previous questions. Full worked graphical solutions are included in the presentation. Here's an overview of the presentation. Question one, the problem is initially outlined, then a velocity vector diagram constructed and an acceleration vector diagram. Question two, again, the same approach to the presentation of the solution. And likewise, question three, again, the same presentation for the solution. And here are approximate start times stated in minutes as to when the various sections within the presentation begin. These are only approximate timings, but hopefully they will aid your review of the presentation. Here are some tutorial questions related to slider crank mechanisms. I'll let you review question one at your own pace. It's actually very similar to the example one. So you can use the solution we outlined in the previous presentation as the basis of your solution for question one. Notice the labeling is different here. The crank is labeled as O to A. The conrod is A to B in this case. So different notation, but the crank is moving with a constant angle of velocity says here the crank rotates at a uniform speed of 1800 rpm. To answer the various parts of question one, you will need to construct a velocity vector diagram and an acceleration vector diagram. Answers are shown in the bracket here. I would now encourage you to stop the presentation and attempt question one. Very similar approach to that of the example one. And I'll very briefly outline the full solution on the following slides. And here's the solution to question one. This is very similar to the solution for example one. This slide shows the information extracted from the question, the angle of velocity in RPM converted to radians per second, link geometry converted to meters, and the calculation of the tangential velocity VAO that's the velocity of the crank pin at point A relative to the center rotation at O. This question continued. Here the mechanism is drawn to scale, so we can measure the angle here at B, 14.5 degrees. We're given the angle at O, 30 degrees in the question. Question one continued. Here's the velocity vector diagram. As with the example, we'll start with the tangential velocity of the crank. In this case, that's A relative to O. That's been calculated as 28.3 meters per second. So we draw that to scale on our diagram. We can then draw the tangential velocity to the conrod AB. And because the slider or the piston B moves horizontal, we can close our diagram with the horizontal vector OB. Again, you must choose a suitable scale to draw the velocity vector diagram so it fits neatly on your page. 
Here's point C added to the con rod. It's actually midway along the con rod in this case. So point C on the vector diagram would be midway along velocity vector AB. So we can then find the velocity of point C relative to point O. So there's a completed velocity vector diagram. We now just need to measure the appropriate velocities with our rule related to the scale used to draw the diagram. For reference, here's the 14.5 degree angle that we scaled from our mechanism diagram. And here are the velocities scaled from the actual vector diagram. VOB is 21 meters per second. VOC is also 21 meters per second. And VAB is 25 meters per second. Question one continued. So here we've calculated the velocity of point C relative to O. That's by measurement of the diagram. And we've also calculated the angular velocity of the con rod AB. Knowing the linear velocity of the con rod, VAB is 25 meters per second. Knowing the length of the con rod, 0.3 meters. We can calculate the angular velocity of the con rod. So omega AB is 83.3 radians per second. And I've also converted that here into RPM. And as with example one, here in question one, we now tabulate all the values that we know, the length from the question, the linear velocities that have been calculated or measured from the diagram, the angular velocities that have been calculated. And then we can determine the centripetal accelerations, and that will allow us to then draw the acceleration vector diagram for where we can find the other unknown entities in the table. So question one continued. Here's a construction of the acceleration diagram. We'll start with the central petal associated with link OA, the crank. If we position ourselves at O on the crank, central petal acceleration is always acting inwards. So we see that going in a southwesterly direction. So that's where this line here is drawn on the acceleration diagram. That defines point A in this case because there's no tangential acceleration of point A relative to O because the link is rotating with constant angle velocity here. Now for reference, the 30 degree angle here is this 30 degree angle here on the mechanism. So moving around to point A on our diagram, the central P to acceleration from the connecting rod, AB, is towards point A. So that will generate this line here on our acceleration diagram. Also added the angle 14.5 degrees here, again purely for reference. Let's put this line here on a diagram defining point B dash, and then we draw a tangential line to the connecting rod. So this line here is tangential to the connecting rod axis. And where that crosses the horizontal, that will define point B. And then vector OB will be the linear velocity of the piston or the slider in this case. So there's our finished diagram. And then we will simply measure the various lengths of the vectors here to find the accelerations of the unknown quantities using the scale provided. So here's a conclusion of question one showing the completed table with the final measured accelerations now added to the table. Question two, again a slider crack mechanism, but now change its orientation. So this slider crack mechanism is now having the piston in the vertical sense instead of the horizontal sense. Crank OA rotates about O here. And again, it's assumed that the angular velocity 
omega is constant, 6,000 RPM in this case. So for the position of the mechanism shown, you need to draw the velocity vector diagram and the acceleration vector diagram and answer the various questions here. Answers are shown in the bracket. I would now encourage you to stop the presentation and attempt question two. But the full solution is outlined on the following slides. Question two, solution. In this question, the mechanism has been reorientated. So the piston B now has a vertical motion relative to fixed point O. But it's still a slider crank mechanism. As always, the first thing to do is to read the question carefully and then extract the appropriate information from the question. And that's what's been done here. Again, notice in this question, the angular velocity of the crank is a constant value. So there's no angular acceleration of the crank in this particular question. Also notice in this particular question at point C is not midway between A to B. So we need to be careful of that positioning when we're constructing our velocity vector and acceleration vector diagrams. Notice also in this question, the dimensions of the crank and the conrod are actually in centimeters. So they need to be converted into meters. I'll let you review that slide at your own pace. But the solution continues on the following slide. Question two, solution continued. Here's a generic overview of the procedure for constructing the velocity vector diagram. I'll let you review this at your own pace. But the following slides will show you the process through the solution. Just notice in this question again that the point C is actually not midway between A and B. It's actually 0.4 of the length of AB from point A. So question two, solution continued. Here's the mechanism drawn to an appropriate scale. So various angles can be measured. This angle here measured approximately 20.3 degrees from the diagram. And here's the velocity vector diagram, again drawn to an appropriate scale. Point O here is the fixed rotational point on our diagram. And again, we commence by drawing the tangential velocity of the crank pin relative to point O, which we calculated in our previous slide. That is this velocity vector, VAO, shown here on our mechanism diagram. And of course, VAO is at right angles to link OA. Drawn at the angle of 30 degrees to the vertical is shown here. Crank OA is, of course, 30 degrees to the horizontal. So that defines point A on our diagram. To find point B, we'll have to use the construction line for the tangential velocity of link AB, which will be this line. Drawn at the angle of 20.3 degrees to the horizontal, shown here. And here's the tangential line drawn on the mechanism diagram at 20.3 degrees to the horizontal again and at right angles to link AB. And of course, in this case, the piston movement is vertical. So to define point B, we would drop a vertical line through point O and where it intersects with line AB, we'll define point B. We said previously, be careful here that point C is actually 0.2 meters in from point A. That makes it proportionally 0.4 of length AB. So to find point C on our diagram, we will have to construct the 0.4 of the lengths of AB on the diagram to determine this point here. I'll let you think through the graphical solution for yourself. Again, for reference, just notice the angles used in the construction of the diagram. The 30 degrees shown here on the velocity vector diagram is this 30 degrees shown here on the mechanism diagram. And this 20.3 degrees shown here makes this angle here of 20.3 degrees on the mechanism.
students sometimes have difficulty understanding which angles to use to generate the various vector diagrams. So again, just think through carefully how we've used the angles and the mechanism to form the orientation of the velocity vectors. Question two, solution continued. As previously, we can now start to populate the values in our table for the linear and angular velocities. And we can determine the central p to acceleration of the crank and the conrod. Again, in this question, there is no angular acceleration of the crank, so there's no tangential acceleration to consider. But we will need to measure the linear acceleration of the piston relative to fixed point O, and also measure from our acceleration diagram the tangential acceleration of the conrod, and then calculate the angular acceleration of the conrod. Question two, solution continued. Here's the acceleration vector diagram, again using an appropriate scale here. Consider ourselves at point O, our fixed rotational point. Then the central to acceleration from A to O is downwards at 30 degrees to the horizontal. That will be the first vector drawn on our diagram here. So we know the value of the central P2 acceleration. And as the crank is moving with constant angular velocity, then there's no tangential acceleration on the end of that vector here. So that defines point A for us. Next on our diagram at point A, we'll consider the central P2 acceleration. But at that point, and that will be downwards. Again, we know the value of the central P to acceleration. That defines point B dash, but it's really point B we're considering. And that's where we have to draw a tangential acceleration vector to link AB. And here's the acceleration vector shown on the mechanism diagram at right angles to the connecting rod AB. That will be in this sense. As the acceleration of B, the piston is vertical in this case. Vertical acceleration vector for piston B relative to O, shown here in the vertical sense. We simply draw a vertical line. And the intercept of the two lines defines point B. Again, notice that point C is point 4 from A, so on our diagram, make sure that you define point C, the appropriate distance from A, before measuring the vector O to C. I'll let you think through the process of constructing the acceleration diagram at your own pace. Question two, solution continued. And finally, we can complete the table of accelerations as required. That concludes the solution to Question two. And finally, question three, another slide of crank mechanism. You have to construct the velocity and acceleration diagrams as before, and determine the velocity and acceleration of point G, shown here on the connecting rod, and also find the angular acceleration of the connecting rod AB at this instant. First geometry is given. For the links here, notice in this particular case, the crank O to A has an angular velocity omega that's actually stated in radians per second. So 25 pi radians per second. In the previous questions, the angular velocity was stated in RPM. Also notice a difference in this question to previous questions that the crank OA actually has an angular acceleration alpha. And the alpha is 400 pi radians per second squared. Now that's different to the previous questions we've considered where the crank was assumed to have a constant angular velocity omega. In this case, the crank is actually accelerating. And that will make a difference when constructing the acceleration vector diagram in that we will not only have a central P to acceleration, an inward seeking acceleration of the crank from A to O, 
but we will also have a tangential acceleration as well to add to our diagram. So a subtle difference when constructing the acceleration diagram for question three, as opposed to our previous questions. Various answers are stated in the bracket for reference. I would encourage you to now start the presentation and attempt the question, but solutions are very briefly overviewed on the following slides. And here's question three, solution. So in this question, we're given the angular velocity in terms of pi radians, the omega of the crank is 25 pi radians per second. I have converted that here into decimals, that's 78.54 radians per second. The length of the crank OA is 100 millimeters, so convert that to meters, and the length of the con rod AB is 300 millimeters, again, convert to meters. Notice in this case the crank link AO is actually accelerating and the angular acceleration alpha has been stated as 400 pi radians per second squared. So that will make a slight difference when we begin constructing our acceleration diagram. Drawing the mechanism to a scale, I measure the angle at B here is 16.8 degrees. And as always we begin by calculating the linear velocity of point A relative to O, the crank pin relative to the fixed center of rotation, and using the above values for angular velocity of the crank and length of the crank, that evaluates to a linear velocity, VAO, of 2.5 pi meters per second or 7.854 meters per second in decimal. Note for the geometry that AG is 100 millimeters so this length here is 100 millimetres, so as length AB is 300 millimetres, G is a third the way from A along our link AB. So point G is one third of the length of member AB from point A. And that proportion will be used to calculate point G on the velocity vector diagram and the acceleration vector diagram. So question three, solution continued. Here's the velocity vector diagram, originally drawn on a scale of 10 millimeters is equivalent to one meter per second on A4 paper. Diagrams constructed in a very similar way to our previous diagrams. Commence from point O, then draw the tangential velocity vector VAO 30 degrees to the horizontal in this case. And as we've calculated VAO on our previous slide here, we define point A. To find point B as before, we use construction lines, drawing a tangential velocity vector to the conrod here, right angles to the conrod, the velocity vector diagram. And piston point B in this case moves in a horizontal sense, so a line horizontally from O intersects with the tangential velocity to define point B. And remember from the information in the question, point G will be a third of the way along vector AB from point A. So that defines point G. We can now measure the various velocity vectors and begin completing our table of velocities on the next slide. Just for clarity, I've tidied up the velocity vector diagram and clearly stated the measured velocities to our scale used. Here's the velocity of A relative to O, the velocity of B relative to O, the velocity of B relative to A, and the velocity of point G relative to O. So in question three, solution continued. I've actually shown the calculation here for the velocity vector AG. That's the velocity of point G relative to point A. We can quite easily measure it from the velocity vector diagram. That's this length here. Using the formula here, this is the velocity AG divided by the 
length AG, and that's equal to the velocity AB divided by the length of link AB. Rearranging for velocity AG, that's velocity AB divided by length of link AB multiplied by distance AG. Inserting the values, the velocity vector AG is one and a third meters per second. But that calculation is purely for reference only. And then we tabulate the linear velocity and angular velocity values, some calculated and some determined from our vector diagram. As before, we can then work out the central P to accelerations, as shown here. In this case, because we actually have an angular acceleration of the crank, it's 400 pi radians per second squared, stated in the question, we can actually work out a tangential acceleration for the crank from alpha multiplied by L, the length of the crank. So in this case, that's 125.7 meters per second squared. And we'll need to use that in the construction of our acceleration diagram. As always, we've got to measure the linear acceleration of the piston B relative to fixed point O. That's measured from the diagram. And we measure the tangential acceleration of the conrod and we calculate the angular acceleration of the conrod. Here's the acceleration vector diagram, and here's the scale used when plotting and constructing a diagram on an A4 sheet of paper. I've added various angles to the acceleration vector diagram here to hopefully help with your construction. I know some students find it difficult to understand at which angles to draw the vectors on the diagram. Hopefully extracting the angles from the mechanism drawing itself and adding them to the vector diagram may help you with your construction. So as with the previous vector diagrams, we consider ourselves initially at point O. And here's point O as the origin of the acceleration diagram. Then considering point A relative to O, if we were at O looking at A, we would see the central P to acceleration of A relative to O coming down the crank towards O, it's inward seeking acceleration. So that becomes the first line we draw from point O here on our acceleration diagram. So that's the central peak acceleration of A relative to O, and that was calculated as 616.2 meters per second squared in our previous table, shown here. Notice in this case that to find point A dash and not point A because in this question we actually have an angular acceleration of the crank. So it's not moving with constant angular velocity. So therefore there will be an associated tangential acceleration of point A relative to O. So here's the direction of the tangential acceleration of A relative to O. Notice it's at right angles to the link. So that means is it's 30 degrees to the horizontal. From our previous table, we calculated the tangential acceleration AO to be 125.7 meters per second squared, shown here in our table. That now does define point A on our diagram. Now point A is defined, let's move ourselves to A on our diagram now we review the central P to acceleration of point B relative to A. And that will be in this sense as shown, again inward seeking towards A. So that allows us to draw the central P to acceleration on our diagram from A to B dash. And the central P to acceleration calculated from our table B to A was 53.3 .3 meters per second squared, shown here in our table. So still considering point A here, there will be a tangential acceleration of B relative to A in the direction shown. It will be at right angles, of course, to the connecting rod AB. So what we do now is draw a construction line shown in the dash green line on the vector diagram, in a sense shown on the mechanism diagram here. We don't know where that ends, 
we just draw a line through point B dash on our diagram. But we do know that the piston, point B, has to move horizontally relative to point O. So we can draw another construction line, this dashed green line in a horizontal direction from O, where it intersects with the line from B dash. That defines point B for us. So this is point B defined here. And that then closes the diagram. So we now have our acceleration diagram. This slide shows the clarification of our acceleration vector diagram. Here's point O, the origin, the center of rotation of the crank. Here's point A defined, the crank pin, and point B defined, the piston. Now all we need to do is to measure the lengths of the various vectors and using our scale, determine the accelerations. So for acceleration of B relative to A, we measure the length of this vector here. And using our scale, that evaluates to 625 meters per second squared. To determine the acceleration of B relative to O, and that's the piston relative to the center of rotation of the crank, ABO on our diagram, that's the length of this line here. And again, using the scale, that evaluates to 300 meters per second squared. Just note for reference in this case, the acceleration of point A relative to O stated here actually equates to the length of this line here. And using our scale, that evaluates to 628 meters per second squared. Now that's actually the resultant acceleration of point A, because in this case, the acceleration of point A relative to O is defined by two accelerations. That is the central P2 acceleration, shown here, and the tangential acceleration, shown here. So essentially the resultant acceleration is the hypotenuse of the right angled triangle shown here. This right angled triangle here. And finally, we need to determine the acceleration of point G, shown here on our con rod, relative to O. To do that, we need to find the position of point G on our acceleration vector diagram. Remembering that G is defined as a third the way along Conrad AB from A, stated here. Then point G is located a third the way along acceleration vector AB from point A here. So this is a third the length of AB. So that now defines point G on our acceleration diagram. So measuring this line here allows us to calculate the acceleration of point G on the conrod relative to point O. So using our scale, AGO is 460 meters per second squared. Question three, solution continued. Here's a calculation for angular acceleration of the conrod. Noting from the acceleration vector diagram that the acceleration AB, that's the tangential acceleration AB, this instance in time is 625 meters per second squared. So to calculate the angular acceleration alpha, that's the linear acceleration divided by the length of the conrod. So 625 meters per second squared divided by 0.3 meters. The angular acceleration is 2083.3 meters per second squared. Probably for reference, here's a calculation of the acceleration vector AG, and that's the acceleration of point G relative to A. That uses the geometrical information stated in the question, where it's defined that point G is a third the way along vector AB from point A. And from the acceleration vector diagram, the acceleration of point G relative to point O, so point G relative to point O, 
was evaluated to be 460 meters per second squared. That's measured from the diagram. And question three, solution continued. Here's our table with the values now measured from the acceleration diagram added and also the calculation from the previous slide for the anger acceleration the Conrad added. So that concludes the solution to question three. And here's the bibliography used to help generate the presentation. I hope it has been of interest to you and thank you for viewing.